Next up, we have a friend of ours who's coming a little bit of a distance. It's uh, Mylin. She was born and raised in communist Cuba and since Cuba, and since coming to the U.S. the United States 22 years ago, she's been a staunch defender of individual freedom and rigor rigorous academics and public education, and has also been fighting for parental rights. She's the mother of two American children made with Cuban parts. I want to welcome Mylin. Come on up. Hi, thank you everybody for being here. Let's try to. interesting. <laughs> Thank you everybody for being here today. Like Lan says, my name is uh, Maylin Salavarria. I am the Director of Community Engagement for Parents Defending Education. We are a national grassroots organization that works very hard to educate parents in the entire country about their parental rights, promoting transparency and accountability in public education, and obviously trying to return the K-12 classroom environment to the basics of academics. Um, I am also a mother of two children born in the U.S. who also attend public schools. And while I was traveling here, thinking into preparing the remarks to talk to you today about this, I was just like thinking, what can I do or what can I say that most of the parents that are in this group today, uh, standing up to draw that a line in the sand, have not seen read, learn, or experience in their own life with their own kids um, in school, that it could be something new for them. That's why I kind of like did the old school notes too. And then it hit me when I thought about it, um, when I thought, what kind of message of hope can I share with all these parents um, to be to be able to keep them engaged and energized about being involved and about being vigilant and paying close attention to what is happening to their kids that are attending schools in our country today. It made me think, ¿qué mensaje de esperanza puedo compartir con los padres hispanohablantes que están creando una nueva vida en este país para sus hijos y que necesitan permanecer activados y vigilantes con lo que está pasando en los salones de clase? Then it hit me when I realized that it's the same calling that I had when I saw what was happening with my own countries in public education in the United States that have gone off the rails, and I start having personally flashbacks to what my life in Cuba was. See, I am the proverbial child of the state. I was born, raised, and completed my entire K-12 education in a communist society, actually all the way to law school until I left. I am the living testimony of how it feels and how it looks like to be in an educational system that is completely controlled by the government and its representative, where parental rights are existent or are completely obliterated on a daily basis. And I am here to tell you that this is the battle of our lifetimes. There is no way that we can let our guard down right now. In this, uh, in the country, um, as the latest reports that parents of education have been publishing, we have over a thousand school districts in the entire union that have uh, signed, passed, and are currently enforcing parental exclusion policies that keep parents in the dark when it comes to the gender confusion of their minor children. We have ideological and political agendas that have nothing to do with reading, writing, or math that are being inserted in every single class subject in our schools and our kids. This, there is a significant lack of accountability and transparency, and parental rights are being trampled on on a daily basis. Here at the local level in California, it's been very good and very hopeful to see the big changes that some school districts have uh, achieved passing parental information and parental notification policies in the last few weeks. Um, yeah. And then it's only the beginning. That's why it's important that we continue to be engaged in this fight. Finally, 
it is our duty to keep this momentum going because what is happening in California is not it's not only here in your state. It's happening nationwide, and it's what we're working on and seeing on a daily basis in all the states. Finally, I would like to do a very personal close reminder and calling to all of you, and I would like you to share it with any neighbor, Spanish-speaking, Latino, or any other minority or otherwise, and please put the message out. When you feel, when you feel that in the middle of this battle that you're born out, that you're isolated, that your knees are bending down, I want you to remember this little story. I started my life in America 22 years ago with two suitcases and $200 in my pockets with the simple goal of give, giving my children the opportunity to receive an education and to have a life completely different from the one that I have to escape from. Recuerden, para las familias hispanas, para los padres que hablan español, nosotros no somos disidentes, no somos terroristas, nosotros somos los padres de nuestros hijos menores de edad y tenemos un derecho constitucional que nos da la, que nos da la autoridad para dirigir y para poder moldear la crianza y la educación de nuestros hijos. And a final disclaimer, we are not the troublemakers who misbehave in public. We are the parents and we're not going anywhere. Thank you. Gracias.